Look, no matter how many years you've done this, your business can always take unexpected lessons learned at the flip of a switch. After all, the goal is to minimize these occurrences, right? You see, 2023 was my biggest year. It was my biggest year for growth. It was my biggest year for income. It was my biggest year for profits. Even though it was my most successful year by far, it posed the most lessons that I needed to learn the hard way. And that's why I'm making this video for you guys so other landscapers don't need to learn these lessons the hard way. You can watch this video by the end of the video. You know exactly what to do to watch out for those hurdles in your business. This video can save you thousands of dollars and tons of time. So without further ado, let's dive right in. Lesson number one, the power of contracts. Listen, no one wants to talk about contracts. Contracts are boring. Contracts are a pain in the ass. Contracts are painstaking. We all hate them. However, in 2023, I got to learn just how valuable contracts become when customers go crazy. Having a contract is a piece of paper between you and your client that says, I'm giving you this, I'm charging you this, here's what's included, here's what's not included. It also goes over all the payment schedules, all the legalities, everything that can and cannot be done. Now I'm sure all of you know this, but the reason I'm bringing this up is because I had some crazy ass clients in 2023. I'd like to think and say that I'm a very good judge of character. And after being in this game for almost 20 years, there's a lot, a lot of red flags that I know to look for. And none of these clients that I met with ever posed a red flag. They were fun, they were easy going, they were well knowledgeable about what they wanted, they made decisions great with me. Everything about it seemed to flow naturally. I was actually beyond excited to work with these people and it just worked out that way. In fact, I was extremely excited to work with these people. Plus they had nice homes, their projects were nice, they were pretty straightforward deals. I had one that turned out batshit crazy and the other one was simply just unpleasable no matter how many angles we took a different approach to it. Here's a little backstory. Years ago, I had a couple minor issues with clients and I had some contracts made for my installs, my designs, things like that. And ever since then, I always promised myself I would use a contract for each and every job that we performed so we wouldn't have issues in the future. And that's what I did with these jobs. We had contracts with these people, everything was signed, everything was kosher, or so I thought. But a funny thing happens when you have issues with clients. In these instances where a client is just unpleasable or completely crazy and views the world from a completely different lens, it causes you to look back at your contract and read the fine print. So because I had a contract in place, I thought I had the upper hand. Turns out that my contracts were vague in certain areas. Even though there was three different lawyers that looked over my previous contracts that I had been operating under. The next detail is that you can't get too specific. The problem with contracts is if they're vague, they're not legally binding in many cases. Long story short, these contracts saved my ass and they saved my business and they saved lots of money but it caused a lot of stress with me going back and forth with lawyers to see what I should do and figure out my next move and the game plan and the right way out of each of these scenarios. You see, it's not what people seem like, it's when money is actually on the table. That's when people show their truest colors. So for me, in 2023, it was very important for me to overlook my contracts and make sure they weren't just safe for me and help support me, but that they were bulletproof. Absolutely as bulletproof as possible. And from there, you take a look back and you say, hey, if this scenario happened, how could this protect me? If this scenario happened, how could this contract help me exit this scenario? Or if this scenario happened, how could I get my money and we go separate ways? So what I'm saying is that you need a contract, but you also need to make a contract and look at it from every angle with lawyers and make sure that if you have a customer that's completely crazy, that they're going to be able to do minimal damage to you and your business. That's the goal. You want to be able to operate freely, do the business that you do, which should be good business, but you and your business should not be punished or go through the stress of legalities if you run across that one in a thousand customer who's just freaking crazy. I made a file set of master contracts. If you'd like these contracts to adopt into your business and edit for your business, go on Instagram, message me, and I'll send you the link. So I'm a little old school when it comes to buying things for my business. I usually only buy things if I need it or if I have the money to just pay it off and buy it outright. But with this case, it turned out we were using a lot of rental money with a bobcat that was very specific that could fit through side gates. So this year, I took all the math, I totaled everything up, 
and I was spending a, a ton of money on rentals. So then I went and I got a price on that Bobcat. Turned out the payments on that Bobcat were less than half of what I spend on a monthly basis just on rentals. So what did I do? I bought the Bobcat. My payments on the Bobcat are cheap. They're saving me more than half each month, over $2,000 a month. So this debt that I was scared to get my business in is paying me back that much more, making me that much more, actually paying for the rental, actually the loan, if you will, and it's not actually debt. And not only that, it meant that we could use the equipment not just when we needed it, like what we were doing, but also every time we sort of needed it, we could just bring it along with us for that day. In 2023, I had my son born. It meant that I went from one kid to two kids. And what that did is it really showed me where my time was going. I had to help tend to my wife, tend to two kids now, and it really pulled on my strings time-wise. It was a hard reset on where I was spending my time and the importance on said time. And that leads me to my discovery. Your time is 10 times more valuable than you'll ever believe it to be. Where I'm getting at is that you're probably wasting three to four hours a day that you're not even realizing. You're just kind of browsing through the day on autopilot, not actually planning your entire day out. This means if you wanna optimize you, you need to start thinking, how could I delegate this out? How could I navigate my day? How could I pre-plan everything so everything falls in line? As a business owner, your time is the most valuable time out of anyone in your business. It's not until you start acting that way and thinking that way that things are going to fall in line. It's not until you start acting like a $100,000 a year business that you're going to appreciate your time that much. And that way your business is going to follow suit. Your time should be spent on your sweet spots, on your gifts, on the things you're good at, and you need to delegate and hire out things that you're not good at. This landscape industry is notorious for people needing to be there, for the owner needing to be there, for lack of flexibility, for lack of time, everyone stretched for time. But I think now we need to rethink that. You see, in 2023, I did all the math, I traveled over four and a half months during 2023. I was out of town for more than four and a half months in 2023. I think that's pretty special because I was out of town with my family, I was at cool places, I was doing trips, I was seeing the world. I wasn't slaving away on my business, and that's what I want for each of my viewers. And although it's great to say, hey, I traveled for four and a half months, what it really boils down to is that you have time flexibility, because what happens is you might get the flu, you might have a family member that you need to take care of, you might need to travel for something, you might have something arise in your business where it needs you or you're incapacitated, and then your business can run without you. So one of the most important things is building a business that operates while you're not there. I encourage people to leave for a random Wednesday and see what happens, see who calls, see what events happen that make you stressed, see what customers say, see where your employees freak out. Use all that, that's all data. That's data that helps us get together and figure out that's where I need help, that's where the main sticking points are for my business to operate without me. Then from there, leave for a week. I don't care, don't go out of town, stay in town, just pretend like you're gone for a week and see how things operate. Now, I'm not saying you should just hire out each and every task that you fulfill in your business, but I am saying that you should be able to leave for a week, two weeks, a month, with your business running seamlessly without you. Sure, when I leave for like six weeks, there's things to do when I get back, but it's not burnt down. My business is still providing income it's still doing better than if I was there, to be honest. My advice is to start small. Take one day and just don't go in and see what happens. But I can coach you through it. If you go to Landscapers Academy, I have plenty of resources to help you learn this art of making a landscaping business or a construction business that operates solely without you, that functions without you, that breathes without you. You see, my business does big numbers, but it's very small. I don't have tons of employees, but I've built it very smart so it operates without me the way that I want. If you need help with that, go on landscapersacademy.com. I can help you out there. I've helped many others do the same. Right around Christmas time, I got a message from one of my people in my group. He said, I haven't seen any of my workers in two months. I didn't think this was possible. Guys are wrapping up the season this week without me. Unfortunately, it took a broken elbow for this to happen, but I'm home with my wife and my four five month old soaking up the days I will never get back. You're a legend for all the advice. It's messages like that that make my day. This guy's name is Tyler. He was slaving away in his business. Now his business runs without him. And unfortunately his elbow broke, but at least he could stay at home and his business is still paying for his family, paying for his income, paying for his food, paying for his rent, all that good stuff. That's what it should do. 
You don't have a job. You're a business owner. Start acting like it. In 2023, I hired on a few people, but I tested a lot of people to figure out who I wanted to stay with in my business. That's important. In 2023, I hired on some people. We grew a bit, which was great, but it meant that I had to go through a ton of bad employees to figure out the path. So I have a very good system for finding reliable employees, and it led me to employees like it always does. But this year I was extra picky on employees because one bad employee or one even mediocre or decent employee can cost you thousands each month compared to one rock star employee. So I actually ended up firing a lot of employees that I tried for weeks at a time. They were good, but they weren't ideal. I'm not looking for just some laborer that sits around a little. I'm looking for pure talent that is energized and ready to rock and roll. I'm looking for someone who I want to pay a ton of money because their services are worth it and someone who because they put out so much outcome, they also help me in the business profit as well. Since I was extra picky, I got really good at firing people even more than I have been in the past and it's uncomfortable, but it's necessary. I think what it boils down to is that your standards in your business need to be higher and higher and higher than they've ever been before. So my message to you is in 2024 and beyond, don't waste time on good employees Wait for the great employees. They are worth it. So my message to you is to get rid of all the good employees and find the rock star employees. Find the ones that aren't good, but great. It's those great employees that make your business get better reviews. It's those great employees that make your business profit more. It's those great employees that make you more reputable. It's those great employees that make you in a better mood and make you more reliable too. It's those great employees that take things off your plate and those great employees that make your business expand. So you literally cannot afford anything less than an amazing employee. If you have employees that aren't quite perfect in your business, now is my message to you to get rid of them. You need to just get rid of them and start new. If it freaks you out to fire people because you're worried about finding someone new, that's how I used to be, message me, I'll send you my free link to how to find employees. Lesson number six was to totally be different. Be different than other landscapers. If you're one of 200 landscapers that can pull weeds, you have no strategic benefit. However, if you're the only person in your city that does what that specific customer is needing, they're going to pay whatever rates that you're asking for. So in my business, we specialized. We specialized more in 2023 and it led to more profits. We specialize more in design to be specific. So a lot of people view this design game as an art form and in a part it is, but it's a learned skill from my viewpoint. And we've learned and grown a lot as a design firm that also builds out these designs for backyards. It was this specialization that caused people to call me. In fact, more people called me because they saw my designs and they heard of my design process and my creativity. It was these amazing designs that when someone came over to their friend's house for a drink, they would need to know my name. They would need to see my business. They would want to meet me and they'd want the same for their yard. So it sounds simple that I'm providing designs, but if you prove to be an expert in your area, I can charge whatever I think is fair. And I feel that's the same way any business owner should have their business. And that's exactly what I'm wanting for your business. So that's it for 2023. I learned a lot, I grew a lot, and this is my advice. Watch this a few times. Let it soak in, act upon this, and it'll help you along your way to success. I would love it right now if you subscribe to my channel, give me a like, or even enter in the comments and tell me about your experiences in 2023 and your goals for 2024. I have a lot more content coming down the pipeline for you guys. So with me doing that, I want you to subscribe so I can send you that and you can grow your business alongside with me. Thank you for watching. Let's make 2024 and beyond a success.